Hey there guys, it's Zolo here with the deck profile for the Denko Dolls. This is a deck that uh, is actually kind of good. I've been playing with this for a little while, uh, like a couple of matches, and I realized that this is actually a really fun deck to play. Uh, so for you should all players out there, this is something that you might want to be playing for the next format. Uh, the Denko Dolls is a very aggressive way to play the Shot Dolls, and it's going to uh, basically a spam out uh, fusions while having your Denko Seka on board to lock your opponent out of their ever so valuable back row to keep uh, your opponent from, you know, keep them away from uh, stopping your fusions to land on board and just dishing out all that precious damage. And uh, yeah, you, you can do a lot of nasty stuff with this. Uh, your main card, of course, being Denko Seka, and you're just going to give your opponent no room to breathe and you're just going to walk nine paces ahead of them, uh, well, nine yards ahead of them while they're struggling behind because you just have Seka locking them down. Um, of their precious background, which could t potentially change the game. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go into this deck profile and I'll explain as we go along. So, first we're on the one uh, Blacklist Soldier armor at the beginning. This card is absolutely stupid in this deck. You bring him out extremely easy uh, since you run a lot of lights and darks, and this deck is just a dump galore. I mean, if you open up with a Shadow Fusion uh, plus a uh, BLS and you go second and your opponent just made a Dante or something, you summon Denko Saka, you go play this, make, um, whatever is his face, um, and go ahead and make a construct, then you banish the two monsters you just sent to the deck, from your deck to your graveyard, to spread them out your BLS, and then that is, uh, basically game. Uh, all, it, well, it's almost game, it's like, uh, somewhere on the six to 7,000 points of damage range on that alone, and your opponent can't respond to it because you have Denko Saka out. So, this deck is a deck that really wants to go second. And uh, next to go for the one Dark Arm Dragon, this is an amazing card to give with another card, which I just put in this, just, just for fun, and just testing it out. I haven't gotten to actually testing this uh, particular part of the deck out yet, since I haven't actually drawn into him. Uh, but he's pretty cool. Um, he just puts a lot of pressure on board immediately and allows you to get rid of some nasty things that you really don't want to deal with, nasty monsters and stuff, while you have Denko Sack available. He also is another 2,800 points of damage, which could potentially lead to an OCK. So, uh, yeah, if you open up with this guy... Uh, as well, you can basically go for whatever you want. Uh, next, we go for the uh, double chaos sorcerer. This is to get rid of troublesome, troublesome monsters, and uh, it's just another easy summon. Should we not have access to something like BLS uh, to get rid of? Yeah, you know, just the troublesome monsters that you don't really want to deal with in this deck. Uh, next, we go for the triple shadow beast. Uh, this is the monster that you most likely want to be able to fusion summon it with because he's never dead. Like. Uh, you can fusion with this guy how many times you damn please because you're always going to get to draw a card off him So he's never bad to fusion with uh, which is you know fairly fantastic uh, So hence why he's one of the very few should also actually run three of uh, because he's rarely if ever dead uh, As long as you have a fusion on hand uh, Next of course we run the double dragon. This is to get rid of any troublesome back row uh, or mainly just for his monster bouncing effect, but, um, it's, but since we're gonna have Sek on board, Dragon is not super duper useful as he usually is if you're playing like Chaos Dolls. So uh, I'm bumping him down to two just because he's not as useful as he should be. But still, bouncing back monsters is pretty powerful in the game. Uh, next we go for the Double Collapse Serpent. We run a awful lot of lights in this, so having access to rank fours as well as level ten synchros is going to be a amazing thing for you and uh, should you want to like go for a tribute of beast that's a good thing too he's also a very good target uh, for things like l fusion should you have access to summoning this guy because whenever he's sent to the graveyard while on field you can add the other one which is the uh, vera buster straight to your hand uh, so i really like the chaos dragon engine in here um well they're like a infinite fodder thing it's kind of cute uh, next to go for the uh, double shadow lizard. This is an amazing card because um, it basically allows you to toolbox into any shadow you want as long as you can send it to the graveyard somehow, say through mathematician or what have you. So you can basically send this guy from uh, your hand to the graveyard to maybe go for an L fusion or something like that. And then you just go uh, dump something that you really need, like say a hedgehog, a beast, or the dragon, maybe the falco. The falco is probably the one you're going to be going into the most though because of just you know, how simply good it is, because it allows you to get back your uh, lizard to pop shit and then use it for uh, Xyz plays and things like that. Uh, next to go for the double Viver Buster, this is uh, the second part of the uh, white black dragon uh, engine, which I really like. 
Um, it's uh, some pretty really good. Uh, these are actually some really good comments. I would love to see these things super rare. Oh, uh, I think they're actually gonna get a reprint too, so that, that's pretty cool. Uh, next we go for the triple Denko stack out. This is the heart and soul of the deck and the namesake for the Denko dolls. Uh, you want to open up with this guy as early as possible, and you want to go second, open up with this guy, then you have basically game because you lock out your opponent out of their, all of their back row. And their only answer to this is basically, okay, better solemn this, otherwise I'm gonna lock, otherwise I'm gonna be out of your back row. Uh, otherwise I'm not gonna be back to any back row as long as this guy's on board. So he's a solemn or bust because uh, you cannot activate things like Torrential Tribute or Bottomless Trap Hole to his summon. Uh, and there are very, very few decks that run solemn warning anyway. It's mostly the, uh, what shall I call it? It's mostly the rogue decks that run it now because of just how OTK heavy the, the this past format has been and just how much damage you can put out on board on, on turn three. And just losing 2,000 damage, no, losing 2,000 life points just because of that puts you into the lethal range. So yeah, uh, many people don't run the one stopping force to this thing and uh, they're probably gonna be starting to do that once uh, Neck Horse becomes a thing because they're also gonna be running this and it's terrifying. Uh, next to go for the double. Felis, uh, Lightsworn Archer, this is a combo card together with a uh, Mathematician to go into things like um, Leo and, not, uh, yeah, not necessarily Leo, but uh, the Moonlight Rose Dragon, the Black Rose Dragon, and possibly uh, Michael, depending on if you have, um, well, not necessarily Michael, uh, you can potentially go into Michael in this deck. Uh, I do believe, I'm not entirely sure right now when I think about it, he's, it's a weird little card. I'm still testing out things to play Michael in this, um, but you, you can potentially run him if you want to. Actually, I don't think Michael works in this, so bye. Uh, you can potentially just run another level 7, but um, or another rank 4, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, he's basically there for she's basically there for the uh, Xyz and Synchro place that it performs as well as the ability to pop shit and mill. But uh, that, that her own effect is rarely, if ever, used in this. You're just going into Moon Rose or Black Rose uh, for it, uh, especially during the friggin' Neck Horse format. Oh my God, Blue Rose Dragon is now Moon Rose Dragon is actually pretty good there. Uh, next to go for the Triple Mathematician. This card is really, really good. I love this card so much because it just allows us to either dump a Squamata or a, a Felis to go for something like Black Rose or maybe just get the uh, Falco from the effect of Lizard so we can then recycle Lizard later on to use for some kind of crazy shenanigans. Uh, as for the level 8 Synchro, I'm actually going to run the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend now think about it. I'm going to go for one of those uh, in replacement of that other one. but. Uh, let's see here. Um, where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, next, we run the Triple Shadow Hedgehog. This is an amazing card as well because it allows you to recruit into your rest of your, um, you know, Shadows. So it's not as amazing as, say, Beast, but it's still a card that you're probably going to want to be fusing into a lot. As well as its ability to flip and search for your Shadow Fusion, El Shadow Fusion, uh, is, is amazing in that regard. Uh, and you want to see these things as early as possible. As soon as you see an L fusion or a, a regular fusion, uh, you basically have uh, all you need. You just, you just need to get one of these, uh, it, preferably one of each, and you basically set for the rest of the game because these guys just uh, recycle them and uh, stuff like that. Uh, next we go for the double uh, Shadow Falco. This is for, uh, well, level 6 synchros as well as level 10s and things like that, uh, like for example going into the Leo, which is amazing, by the way, um, so yeah. Uh, next we go for the uh, one alert of darkness, since we learn an awful lot of darks, so this is an amazing card because it allows you to draw into things where you don't necessarily have things like beast and stuff, and you want to see the fusions as early as you possibly can. Uh, next we go for the uh, double, well, actually no, the triple uh, regular fusion, uh, this is basically a future fusion for the deck if your opponent controls something that's from the extra deck. And uh, it's uh, just it sets up so much shenanigans in this deck. It's not even funny how much dirty stuff you can do with this. Uh, next, of course, we run the triple Mystical Space Typhoon. This card is also pretty amazing. Uh, just getting rid of the Clifford's uh, tools and, um, you know, their sacrifices. Uh, well, mainly the tools, more or less than anything else, uh, is going to be a key in this deck because... Um, this deck already has the um, the Burning Abyss matchup kind of covered with Denko Seka. Uh, so, yeah, but 
you know, they still have Dante, so they can go Dante and smack over it. But uh, this is mainly just to get rid of the nasty, nasty uh, scout, which, you know, you don't really want to deal with. Even though uh, Nephilim or, well, Construct kind of just ruins uh, cliffs anyway. Uh, next we run the Triple L Fusion. This card is amazing. Since it's a quick play regular uh, fusion card, you can just use it during the battle phase and things like that. It's also used for protection in some way, shape, or form if you don't necessarily have, have a Sekka on hand uh, or on field. You can potentially use this to protect your Shadals and going into things like Nephilim or um, the Midrash should you really need something uh, quickly on board uh, to make your opponent lose his targets. Uh, for things like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and things like that. Uh, next we've run a, an interesting little card, which is Mask Change Second. I decided to run this because it's actually pretty amazing in this deck, because uh, if, I don't know... I, I, th I think this card works exactly like Super Poly did, aka that the cost actually manages to trigger that beast's effect, which is, you know, uh, any of the Shadow Monsters effect that to discard it, as well as the monster sent to the graveyard. So you're basically getting a Super Poly out of it. Uh, in terms of what you're getting up, besides, of course, your friggin' Dark Law, which is just wrecks everything in this game right now. Uh, so, it's pretty amazing. Uh, as for the rest of the extra deck, we're running one Shekinaga, triple Nephilim, uh, double Dark Law, triple Midrash, one uh, Leo, one Hot for Dragon Archfiend, one Moonlight Rose Dragon, one Black Rose Dragon, uh, one... Goyo Guardian, and finally one Castel, and that runs up the extra deck. So tell me what you guys think about this, and I'm out.